evening, everyone. So we're doing Stokes Theorem today. Stokes Theorem is really interesting. It's the one thing we do at the end of chapter 16 because Stokes connects line integral with surface integral. It's actually the curl of f. So we're talking about this, this surface integral here. So he connects a line integral with the surface integral, which is really interesting. Um, where can this be useful? Recall Green's theorem? Green's theorem was pretty cool, right? And it dealt with a closed path, but it was limited because it was only in the two-dimensional space. Do you recall that? So while you're talking, I just want to point out, like, Green's theorem. What an awesome theorem it is. Yeah, but um, it was for, like we just did, D, remember it's like P and Q, the derivative of Q with respect to X, minus the derivative of Q, right? This was only for, as you can tell, P and Q, right? A vector field with these two components. So what's great about Stokes is, well, there you go, we're talking about what about in three-dimensional space? You got something that can maybe make it easier to evaluate a line integral when the path is in three-dimensional space. You got a path that maybe goes over here, comes up here, goes down here three-dimensionally, not just in a two-dimensional plane, and it's Stokes theorem. <laughs> so it looks weird, but it actually can make it a lot easier to work a line integral, especially if you had to work three line integrals just to get the answer. So that's what Stokes theorem is all about. Um, I do want to point, they say positive orientation. So now you're like, what does positive orientation mean? in three-dimensional space. That would mean moving counterclockwise as viewed from above. So if I look down like on the xy plane, if I move down, I look down on the xy plane like this, then we'd say, okay, moving counterclockwise, that would have positive orientation. Positive orientation for that. Um, or here's another thing. If you walk in the positive direction around the curve and your head's pointing in the direction of the normal vector, so positive orientation, Positive orientation. I'm moving a positive right, and my head points in the direction of the normal vectors off the surface. Because remember, we talked about a normal vector. I'll point right here. That's a normal vector. So if I walk in a positive direction and my head points in the direction of the normal vector, then my surface should always be to the left of me. That's how you know you got the positive orientation. I just want to say that as well. That's that's actually the author statement. Um, at the beginning of sex, section 16.8, he makes that statement. Because it's kind of weird. You're like, we got a surface integral going on and a line integral. Now, I want to be clear about one thing. We're going to do a few problems today. When they say use Stokes theorem to evaluate a line integral or a surface integral, they want you to use the theorem. So if we just ignored this use Stokes theorem part, you and I would just start working a line integral, wouldn't we? Isn't that a line integral? So if they say use the theorem, they want you to use the theorem. Sometimes that's the one thing that gets lost. Students just, they see this and they start working a line integral. They want you to use the theorem. So what that means is, we'll keep this simple. If they say use Stokes theorem to do this, they want you to do the other side of that equal sign. This is Stokes theorem. They want you to work it this way. They want you to attack the problem by this. Okay? So if they said use Stokes theorem to evaluate this, then we'll work a line integral. We'll work a line integral like we did back in section 16.2. Way back, way before 16.8. So in this particular problem, they said, you Stokes theorem to evaluate this, and when that's our focus. So I want to point that out. Like, how are we going to attack this problem to begin with? It's recommended <laughs> that we attack it this way. It should be easier. That's another way of saying it. You may argue, well, I can do it on either side of the problem. I can do it this way or this way to work the problem. It should be easier to do it this way. That's how we're going to attack the problem by doing this. All right, so this is what you and I are going to do. The curl of the vector field, but I've got a little work to do, but it still should be a lot easier than doing the line integral directly. So can we draw a picture of this? Everyone, there's a triangle. It's got these vertices. Can we just draw a picture of that? What does that look like? Um, all right, y-axis. Z axis, X axis, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, 
One, two, three. There is the surface that you're talking about. That's the surface right there. It's a plane. And that's a plane right there. Use Stokes' theorem to evaluate the line integral where there's the vector field. C is the triangle with these vertices oriented clockwise as viewed from above. So in which way would the path be if we we're doing a line integral? If we look at this from above, <laughs> downward, it's to move counterclockwise, wouldn't that be, because that means with the oriented clockwise as viewed, is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Let me look. Oriented. And I apologize, everyone. Can I change that word? It was counterclockwise. If it was clockwise, it would have gone the other way. It's counterclockwise. Ooh. I'm glad I caught that. It wouldn't have been a big deal. We would have just got a negative answer to the problem. Oriented counterclockwise as viewed from above. That's poor positive orientation. That's the positive orientation. All right. So now, doesn't that mean this is the path we're taking? So in other words, we're saying compute the line integral. Or maybe you start right at that point. You're going to go along this line right here, then go up that line, and then come back this line. That's what we're trying to do. Compute the line integral. Well, if we did this in six and six, if we did this in section 16.2, then we have three line integrals compute, right? And that's a pretty, pretty intense vector field there. That could be a lot of work. A lot of work. That could be over two pages of work just to get that final answer. Whereas this is going to give us the answer in one shot. So we'll pack it this way. Um, so the biggest challenge here, I'm going to rewrite this. We go, what is curl of f dot this ds equal to? It's equal to all this. So I'm going to write that. Um, but are you okay, everyone, if this is our surface, can't we project this onto the xy plane? And that's what I'll do. So I'm going to use x's and y's here. So I'm going to write this is equal to that region D. I can even point to where D is in that image. I'm going to do f composed of r of x and y dot the normal vector rx cross ry. DA. Got a little DA there though. At the end. This is the normal vector. So we gotta make sure that normal vector is pointed upward. That's what I mean. We gotta make sure the normal vector is pointed upward. Because I mean, could you imagine if I walked along this path here? If I walked along this, wouldn't my head point in the same direction as the normal vector? That's what I'm saying. So we'll make sure the normal vector is pointed upward. Okay, so this isn't going to be bad, everyone. This D they're talking about, if we project it onto the XY plane, that D is this part right here. We're going to project it right onto the XY plane. That's our, our projection. So, here's the biggest challenge by far. That R, the surface. They didn't give us the surface equation. I need it. <laughs> We need it. How do I parametrize that surface? And that's what's tricky. You're like, it's just a plane, isn't it? So I want to make sure it's going to be pretty simple. We didn't have to do something from chapter 12. Do you agree the equation of this plane? I need that first. Get the equation of this plane. They didn't give it to us. All they did was say move through these points. But do you agree the equation of the plane is this simple equation? X plus Y plus Z equals 3. Mm -hmm. Can you examine that? And I want to be clear that they did that on purpose. The problem out of the book. If they gave you some bizarre what five two seven, then you and I would have gone back to our our knowledge that we know that how we can get the equation of a plane. Where oh, I got to get a normal vector to the plane, and I need to point the plane, and we'd have to do a cross product. It'd probably be about five ten more minutes of math just to get that. But we did that back in chapter twelve. I believe the author is doing this on purpose to give you very simple points so it's real easy to create the equation of plane. Okay? So I can't have the problem practice set. I think I have one similar to this with like 
two zero 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 two zero 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 two. What would be the equation at that point? If that was a two, and that was a two, and that was a two. It would be what? X plus Y plus Z equals two. It's really just to keep this problem a little bit short. I want to have us working for twenty minutes on it, right? Because that would take a lot longer just to get the equation at point if you just had these three random points. We have to go get the vectors and get the normal vectors. So can you help me parameterize that? That's the hardest part. Now that we know that, is that plane right there, that triangle, what's the parameterization of this? What's R of X and Y? Uh, you want to let X equals X? Y equals Y? And what's this third component? X minus Y. Three, 3 minus X minus Y. Way to go. 3 minus X minus Y. Parameterize the plane. So how about, let's get that normal vector first. Let's do this first right here. We're going to need it. So let's go find that normal vector. Although there might be someone in here who already knows what it is. That's okay. Let's go through the motions. We know how to do it. Rx cross Ry, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's, what's a partial of R with respect to X? Those fast. 1, 0, and... That's why I want to do it with you. It's pretty easy to do. 1, 0, negative 1. What's R, Y? What's the partial of respect to Y? 0, 1, and... Negative 1. Now, this is going to be interesting. When we get this, we're going to make a connection with stuff we've done previously in this course. What's Rx cross Ry? What's the cross product of those two partial derivatives? What do you all get for the first component? One, the right, first one. Out. That times that minus that times that. One. Remember the middle component, you've got to change the sign. Negative. This times this minus this times this. Negative, negative 1 is? Positive. Negative, negative 1 becomes? Positive. Positive 1. And then how about the last component? Zero. 1 times 1 minus zero. 0 times 0. Yeah. 1 times 1 minus 0 times 0. 1. Are you kidding me? And I think you'll make the connection. Oh, yeah. That's the normal vector. Do you remember back in chapter 12, the coefficients to the x, y, and z represents the what? Normal. The normal vector to plane. I know. So we're like, aha, right? Aha, yeah. The one, one, one. That's what we should get. And is it pointed upward? Because we've got to make sure it's pointed upward. Mm -hmm. Because they said we've got to counterclockwise as you from above, so we want to have positive orientation. That's where you see they say positive orientation. Then we've got to make sure the normal vector is pointed upward, which we do. Cool. By the way, do you remember I accidentally had clockwise up here? All we, would, we could have easily done is just use Ry cross Rx. It would make the answer negative. That's the only difference. I thought we'd keep it with positive orientation. All right, so we got this. This is what I mean. This problem is not going to be hard because that's 1, 1, 1. This is way better than doing three line integrals. So this is going to be 1, 1, 1. Okay, so I'm going to set this up. I'm going to get the curl of f of R of x1. And do the dot product with this nice little what? And we'll project it right over that yellow region. But now what do we got to do? We got to find the curl. So do you remember how to get the curl? <laughs> so now I got to find the curl. So like, okay, what's the curl going to be? We did all this. We parameterized the plane. What's the curl? curl of f is, let me work out this double integral, del cross it. We haven't done the curl since section 16.5. Let's try it. Um, we can make a matrix, i, j, k, d, d, x, d, d, y, d, d, z, and I gotta put all that here, all that here, and all that here. So maybe I'll write it like on top of each other. Will that work? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do that here. Right here, I'll just write 2x squared plus 2y squared. I'll write it vertically. The second component is 2y squared plus 2z squared. And this one is 2z squared plus 2x squared. 
I'll just extend these. That's all I'll do. Just to squeeze it in there. Because I mean we gotta do a cross product. So wipe out the first column. What's the derivative of that with respect to y? Minus the derivative of that with respect to z. So here comes the curl. Curl of f is. Let's see what we get. That times that minus that times that. Well, derivative of that with respect to y is. Do I get zero? Well, what's the derivative of that with respect to z? Minus 4z. I want to make sure everyone gets the same thing. That's my first component. You don't get minus 4c. Nice. Hey, middle component, we got to do what? Change the sign. All right, we'll wipe out this. Now do the derivative of that with respect to x minus the derivative of that with respect to z. I get four, negative 4x. And for the last component, wipe this out. Derivative of this with respect to x minus derivative of that with respect to y. And I get minus 0 minus y. Ah, there's the curl. But double check it. Anyone see how I did this? I just, sorry I had to squeeze everything in there. I just want to make sure. I'm like, that was a lot. If I got it all in there. We've got the curl of the vector field in. Now, I'm going to put that here. We still got enough room to compute this. I'm going to put that here, but we're going to have to substitute something for the z because everything's going to be dx dy or dy dx, right? And we're not going polar, are we? Look at that. See that? That's our reach. We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it Cartesian. So now I'm going to just take this problem and say, all right, now we got this right here, and it's equal to double integral negative for z. Negative four x, negative four y. Dot a simple one one one, and I'm gonna do dy dx. Let me make sure we can see my dy dx. One, dy dx. Hey. Um, this is region B here, right? We'll eventually set this up. What am I going to substitute for the z though? Because they said curl of f composed of the surface. So what do I substitute for z? You got to go look back. There's so much writing on your paper right now and on my board. We parameterize the surface somewhere. You see it? That's what I'm putting for z. So I'm going to squeeze right here. 3 minus x minus 1. Right in there. And we'll put a parentheses around. We'll distribute it with the negative four. So now what do we have? Now we have the double integral of. Oh, and I can, I can enlarge this now. What's the equation of that line? So that I can reject this. I'm going to do this over that region there. It's got a little triangle there. You see that? Help me. What would be the equation of that line so I can set up this double integral? That's my projection. Is that 3 minus x? Y equals 3 minus x. Okay. The 0, and I'll go from 0 to 3. Nice. And all I did was just draw that region of integration right there. Cool. That was 3, and that's a 3. All right. So now, 0 to 3, 0 to 3 minus x. What's this distributed times a 1? I get negative 12 plus 4x plus 4y plus, then 1 times this is what? Negative 4x and 1 times this is negative 4y, dy dx. Now I hope stuff cleans up. Does it? Yeah, the x cancels. Because it's getting kind of long. And you're like, he's got a little space there. It's going to have to go over there. I think i got enough room here. What happens? Whoop, 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 whoop. Now I have just a double integral of what? I'll put the negative out in front. 
I'll put the negative 12 out in front. Do you all agree? Negative, negative 12, 0 to 3, 0 to 3 minus x, 1 dy dx. Now, you can work out that double integral. Anybody got a fast way? You forgot the 1. What's that? You forgot the 1. You put the 1 here? Yeah. You bet. I'm going to put it. <coughs> it's okay if I don't write it, but I, I actually agree with you. Put that 1 so people know there's a 1 there. That's what he's saying. Like, I could have left it off because it's invisible. But it's not a bad idea to write that. Because what's double integral of a 1 function? Idiot. So can't we just do negative 12 times here, that triangle? Uh -huh. It's a base of 3 and a height of 3. So what's negative 12 on the area of that yellow triangle? So I've got to be careful. Which triangle? There's triangles all over the place. <laughs> I'm talking about that triangle. That, that 3 by 3 triangle right there. Not this face. Not that surface. That was the surface. So when this x plus y plus z equal 3 was, was this guy right here. He was that plane right there. I just want to point that out. So negative 12 times the area of that triangle, which equals negative 12 times the base is 3, mm -hmm. the height is 3, but it's half base height, right? Mm -hmm. Half base height. So what's 6 times 3 times 3? Negative 36. There you go. That's the final answer. I'm going to talk about what did we just find? Oh, no, 54. Oh, you're the best. 54. You're the best. So you got 3 times 3, 9 times 12, 9 times 6 is? 54. 54. Everyone, thank you. Whoop. It didn't have much room, but we got it all in there, right? Because I'm going to leave this up the whole time. So you understand, like, we're really going to do the left side or the right side. Hey, um. What did we just find? We just found, you remember line integrals find work done by a vector field to move a particle? So when we just found the work done by this vector field to move a particle, we can start here. From here to here, then up to here, and then down to here. All the way around the entire tire closed path. That's what we found. But we use this approach. We use Stokes' theorem to do it because it may seem like it started out like a lot, but once we found the curl, once we found this easy normal vector, this was not bad at all. It was way better than doing three separate line integrals. That might have taken like three times the amount of work that I have up here. So that's what we're saying. Does that make sense? Any questions on this? All right, and let's do another one. So this time, everyone, they're going to watch you use Stokes theorem. Evaluate this. I can erase. I can erase. Yeah. You still can evaluate this where F is. F is 2z, 2y, 2y. And C. Boundary of the part of the parabola. Z equal to four minus x squared minus y squared in octave one, the first octave. Oriented counterclockwise as viewed from above. Okay. That means we've got positive orientation. That means we've got positive orientation. And I really think we should sketch that. Stokes theorem, we should make sketches. Because you want to see the surface. You want to see the curve. You should always look at that. Although the curve sometimes is three separate lines, like the last problem. I'll erase all this. Um, everyone
everyone do you agree the attack method is going to be the same? I'm going to attack it this way. How should I attack this problem? Like this. You go, why? Because they said use the theorem. If they said use the theorem to do this, they want you to do it this way. Could you do it this way? Of course you could. It just would take you long. It's just like doing a problem from section 16.2. You just got a few line angles. So can you help me draw this? C is the boundary of the part of the problem. Z equals 4 minus x squared minus y squared in octet 1. Okay. Go like this. Go like this. On a paraboloid, didn't it just shift up four notches? And then the minus x squared minus y squared make it flip over? Mm -hmm. Good. That's what's happening here. Here's this windsock. Shift up like that. It's going down like this. It's an open circular paraboloid that hits the xy plane. But right here, they don't want the full circle. They only want the part of the circle, the quarter circle, that's in octant one. It's only that part. Not the full, full what? All the way around, right? You have the full, full circle that hits the x right plane. So, do you notice something? If we did attack the problem this way, <coughs> can you tell you'd have three line integrals in it? You do see that. That's good. Look. You would have to do, if you attack the problem this way, we're going to attack it this way, you'd have to do that line integral, parameterize that, curve, then you'd have to do that line integral, then you'd have to do that line integral. That's the boundary, boundary curve or path of the surface. Right? And the surface is this part. That's the surface. The boundary is right here. That line, that line, and that curve. So when you read through Stokes' theorem, they talk about a boundary curve C. A boundary curve C. This is the boundary curve C. It's going from here to here, along that line right there, and this way. So this is like doing a problem from section 16.2, a line integral, where it's like I started here, I had to move along that curve, the particle moves down that line, and comes back that line. So if we attack it this way, that would be three separate line angles. We're going to use Stokes here and do this. So, let's start with that surface. Can you help me parameterize that surface? Oh, I bet you do it easily. Can you parameterize that? Want to project down the xy plane? Alright, so let's talk about the surface. What's the surface? R up. X and Y, what do you get? Let X equal X. Let Y equals Y and what's Z? 4 minus X squared minus Y squared. 4 minus X squared minus Y squared. What's our X? The first derivative. The first partial derivative respect to X. 1, one zero, 0, and negative two, 2 X. What's our Y? 0, 1, and negative 2 Y. y. And what's Rx cross Ry? And we're just going to make sure the normal vector is pointed upward. That means for positive orientation. What do you get? Write that out. This times this minus this times this. Do you get positive 2x for the first component? You check. You get positive or negative? Do you agree? I'm going to wipe this out right there. Are only a positive. Zero, subtract. Negative 2 times a 1. Good. How about the middle component? What about the middle component? 1 times negative 1, because we've got to put the negative down. Negative 1 times negative 2y is 2y subtract 0. And what do you get for this last component? 1 times 1 minus 0 times 0. Don't see how we're doing each cross product? Hey, is that upward? Check. Look. We want. So if you go, oh, what, what if this was what? They said, we're in it clockwise. I would have just changed all these to negatives. That's all I would have done. It really just makes the final answer negative or opposite of what we had. I shouldn't say that the answer was going to be like a negative solution. It would be negative, negative, negative. So we're going to keep that. All right, that goes here. But now we need to what? Oh, we need the curl. So I want surface is done, that's the normal vector. 
but now we need to curl them. So let's find a curl them. I, J, K, D, D, X, a D, D, Y, a D, D, Z. What's the vector field? 2, Z, 2, Y, 2, Y. Can you get the curl of that? Curl of a vector field is a vector. Or curl of a vector field is a vector. Right? What's this times this minus this times this? What's the derivative with respect to y? Minus the derivative with respect to z. 2 minus 0? Mm -hmm. My middle component, I'll get my minus ready. Wipe out the middle column. Derivative with respect to x, minus derivative with respect to z. Right? Negative, this times this minus this times this. Negative, this times this minus this times this. So negative. Negative 2, which is what? Okay? I'll put my negative negative, but I'm going to erase the two negatives and make it a positive. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be careful. Sometimes just missing that right there can throw off the problem. I want to make sure that's going to be a positive 2, right? Right? Oh, good. Now you're positive. Now, what's the third component? Do you expect to x minus or do you expect to y? Zero. Oh, zero? Don't get zero? So I'm loving this problem even better now. Everyone, do you see any variables in there? It's because this vector field, you'll make this observation, this one wasn't as busy as the last one. You know, 2z, 2y, 2y. Look at our curl of the vector field. That's just going to make this map go a lot quicker. So this is way easier than doing three separate line intervals here. So I'm going to set this up. This is region D. Put the curl of f, 2, 2, 0. Dot product, normal vector, 2x, 2y, 1, and the end. Then we'll determine whether to go dy, dx, dx, dy, or go polar. Uh, what's the dot product? 4x plus 4y plus 0. All we gotta do is work out this double integral. Now look where it's projected. You wanna go polar? I know it's not a full circle, but it's a quarter of a circle. So <coughs> projection is a quarter of a circle. Let's go polar. Look at this. This is D right here. That's the region D. A projection onto the x-y plane. Let's go polar. Go polar. Alright. 0 to 2 pi, yes or no? I'm hearing no. That's theta equal to 0. What's theta equal to here? Pi over 2. Pi over 2. 1 half pi, yeah. It's just in the first octave. Uh, what's the radius? Oh, now I'm lost. Some of you probably just know. We've got to talk about that. I have to figure out that actual right there. This is 1 quarter of a circle. I can figure out that radius somehow. And this is all we got. So any ideas, suggestions on how to do this? That surface, let's figure out when that surface intersected the xy plane, right? Mm -hmm. We can start there. So 4 minus x squared minus y squared intersects the xy plane, and the xy plane, z equals what? Zero. So let's look at that carefully. We're going to figure out the radius of that circle. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write it down right now. I'm like, hmm, when does... 0 equal 4 minus x squared minus y squared. I'm trying to figure out this radius of that circle, because that's where it's happening in the xy plane. And when I bring this to the side, and I think you're going to notice the radius of that circle. What's the radius? 2. 2. Now, some of you probably just saw that. That's good. You wouldn't have to do all this. You're doing it in your head. But the radius is 2. So I'm going to go from 0 to 2. Radius of that circle is 2, because you got x squared plus y squared equals 4. I'll just say radius equals 2. If you want to make this picture really good, just put two tick marks here. I don't know if it looks so pretty. Everyone. I'll try to make some really like 1, 2, 1, 2. And you can label this. This intersects at y equals 2. 
And that's x equal to 2. Because this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and that's the z-axis. Right? <coughs> cool. Now, if I'm going polar, what letter's automatic? R. You already data. What's this become though? Is it four? Is x r cosine theta or just cosine theta? Uh. It's r cosine theta. So and this is what I'm getting in here. Yeah, but it's still easier than going Cartesian. Can I split that up? What do y'all think? Can I split that thing up? Yes. 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 I love it. You know that. I can factor out the r. Although some of you don't mind doing iterated integrals. I'll avoid it if I can. I'm going to do 0 pi over 2 of the cosine theta plus sine theta. And multiply this answer to the integral from 0 to 2 of, I'm going to factor out the 4, right? I'll put the 4 right there. And r factored out with an r becomes r squared, right? Is that okay with the factor? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. <laughs> that can confuse you. <coughs> it's really good you see that. I factored out r with r, making it r squared. There's that 4 that got factored out. I put it right there. I could have put the 4 there. That just becomes 4 times r cubed over 3 from 0 to 2. And 4 times 8 over 3 is? 32 thirds. So now, what's these? What's the integral of cosine? Sine theta. The integral of sine theta? Negative cosine theta. We've got to go from 0 to pi over 2. So sine of pi over 2 is 1, 0, minus 0, minus 1. Take this number and multiply it to the 32 thirds. What is that number in there, though? Is that 2? Mm -hmm. That's a 2. 2 times 32 thirds? We just found the work done by the vector field to move a particle along the boundary curve. The whole closed path. Good job. I know some of you still copying, so I'll wait. <clears throat> Stokes' theorem is kind of neat, but we do it at the end because this is the one theorem that connected line integral with surface integral. Line and surface. Well, the last two problems are what we're going to do. We're going to be using the opposite side because they're going to say, use Stokes to do that. So we're going to go back and do that, which is kind of neat. We end this whole course going back to do what we did in 16.2, which I like. I wanted to get to review that. <coughs> Remember when we had to find line integrals? It was just f dot dr. And you go, what's that? Oh, so we'll just do this. Right there. The only thing is, r of t means parameterized curve. Isn't that funny? Look at all the work I was doing. We had all these things with a curl of f. And we had to parameterize the surface. I'm saying. Bypass all that. We're just going to focus on a curve, a little c. There's going to be a big surface. Look for the curve, the boundary curve to the surface. Now, that, it might be bounded above. It's not always bounded below. It depends. It depends on the image we use. So, hey, I figure out from the practice problems, I'll do number 10 and I'll do number 9. Right. Oh, everyone done copying? I'll move along. I'll wait. I'll wait for it right ahead. Because there's a lot up there. You sure? Yes. Hey, I'm going to erase this and tack the problem mark because we're going to tack it the other way. All right. Use Stokes' theorem to evaluate curl.
they got, by the way, they call this the flux of the curl, that F, <laughs> across surface S. Use Stokes theorem to evaluate the flux of the curl, F, for F vector field across surface S. All right, so where F of X, Y, Z equals 2YZI plus XGK. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Because it's a circle. What's the radius though? 
two. Brilliant. You all know the radius is two. Now, how do they know this? They're setting this equal to that. They're looking at the equation of that circle. So I'm going to go off the left here. They realize when this meets this, x squared plus y squared equals four. That means the radius of the circle is two. So to parameterize the circle, they're saying it's two cosine t for the x component, two sine t for the y component. What the heck is the z component? Oh, man, you're good. I know that's tricky just from experience. It's, so I want to make sure everyone sees this. I'm not putting a zero there. It's up, that curve is up in the air at z equal to 4. Now this is the z-axis, the y-axis, and the x-axis. The positive z, positive y, positive x-axis. That curve is up at z equal to 4. Now since this is Stokes there, we're talking about three-dimensional space here, right? So we're going to say that's a 4. Hey, I do want to point out, maybe one of the practices that I can't recall, but what if that curve was down in the x-y plane? Guess what this number has to be then? Zero, very good. Cool. But that's a four, so we're going to leave it. Let's do the line interval. Um, what's my limits then? See, isn't this bizarre, everyone? I only had a single interval. <laughs> it's been a while since we did that. Zero to two pi? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll put F here. Two y z here. What goes here? Y component. Zero. Zero. And what's the z component? X cube. X cube. Science word. You need very good. You want to know you need a 
trig power, it's, yeah, they call it the power reducing identity. It's one half minus one half cosine of two t. So I'm going to put that in here. I'll put the negative 32 out here though. One half minus one half cosine of two t. That's the tr power reducing identity for sine squared. I just put the negative 32 out there. So, what's the interval of one half? I get just one half t, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This becomes negative sine of two t, but by a u sub, a two gets denominated with that two, which becomes a one fourth. I do want to point out, I really didn't work out the math for the u sub. Is everyone okay that they can see that? Yeah, because you've done u sub so often that this, I actually let u equal the 2t. And then I got the 1 half, and I put the 1 half at the 1 half, make another one. So that, I just want to make a note, this is by a u sub. This right here came out by a u sub. In case you want to work all that out. Did anybody need to see that u sub? You sure? I let u equal 2t. Yeah, I, I figured you all get that. And I'm just going to plug in what? 0 and 2 pi. All right. <coughs> What do we get for this answer? I get negative 32 times, I can put a big bracket, we'll do this, minus 